Hi, welcome. This is Julia programming for Nervous Beginners, lesson one of week one. Okay, so this is our first lesson together. We have to try and get used to how things will work on this course. This is me reading, uh, going through a document, uh, and um, a lot of the time I'll be trying to explain and, and show things that are happening by first mentioning them in a document and then going over uh, to the Julia system. So let me start up the Julia system on this particular uh, thing where I'm demonstrating it. Uh, this is the Julia REPL, the R-E-P-L, Read, Evaluate, Print Loop. It's an odd name. It just means that there's a Julia prompt and there's a flashing cursor. We can enter code and we can make things happen in Julia line by line using this interactive prompt. Um, there are other things that you learned from lesson zero that will take a little while to get to, but we'll just start with this uh, document and um, talking about Julia. I want to explain the philosophy of this course a moment. Um, so the idea is that I'm addressing this course to people who may easily give up on, on learning computing. I believe that um, if we take small steps and things are carefully explained, then no gaps, so that everything goes along step by step as we go along, um, we will retain people like that. So I hope that that's true for you. If you're a more experienced programmer, by any means, uh, please follow along. If you're not nervous, it doesn't matter. Um, you, of course, you should still be able to follow, and I think it'll be entertaining. I hope so. Unfortunately, in this first lesson, there will be, have to be gaps, and they will be addressed in detail in lesson two. From then on, I think that we will be able to explain as we go along and have no gaps. So the first thing to do is to go to the REPL and enter some code. And the traditional first piece of code for any computer is just to get it to echo, to, to, to send the message, hello world. And the easiest way to do that in Julia is just to type. Um, you open a double quote character, then you type hello world, and then you have another double quote character. And at the end of that, you just hit your enter key, and then you have entered your first piece of code on Julia. Having done that, we'll immediately go on to our second piece of code, which is my string example one. Equals, and now we have the same piece of code that followed. Now, what is happening here is that hello world is a string value. There are other kinds of values in Julia, and Every computer language has several kinds of values that it talks about, in particular numerical values, character values, and so on. Um, so when we do this and we hit enter, we get the same echoing back, but something different has happened. In fact, what has happened is that we have assigned a value to a variable. This piece of code is doing what is called assigning a value to a variable. Very fundamental process in computer languages. Um, the equal sign binds the string value here. So this is the string value. And it gets bound to a name, a variable name on the left. So this has actually changed your computer's memory in three different places, physically changed it, like switching little lights on and off, tiny lights, I mean, they minuscule, you no possible chance to see them, even if you use a strong microscope. Um, but anyway, they're there, they're there, it's a real physical change. So the name, my string example, was created and it was put into the namespace. Hello world was the string value, was created and it was stored somewhere, the computer knows, we don't have to know where. And then the equal sign is the third place where a little bit of um, change was happened so that there's a binding between the name, my string value one, and the actual string value, hello world. And 
by binding the string value to the name Julia is keeping the string value in your computer's memory so that the value will be available via the name later. Okay, now let's enter this line. Okay, that line is println. You will find out that this is the name of a built-in function. Because it's a function, we're going to follow it immediately with a round, the left part, the opening part of a pair of parentheses, uh, round brackets. And we are going to put inside the round brackets my string example one. That's the name of the variable, right? So what happens? What does the function do when it receives the name of the variable? Well, it just, I, by the way, what I did is I pressed the enter key at the end of the line. So when you type uh, in the Julia repo, nothing happens until you hit the enter key. You can see the code, but it's not executed. Hit the enter key, Julia tries to execute the code. Um, so this built-in function println has actually received the name my string example one, which is the name of a variable, and so it has gone and it has fetched the string value associated with a variable, which is hello world, and what println does is it then formats what it gets. In this case, there's hardly any formatting to do, and it echoes it back onto the screen. In the case of Printlin, we don't actually see the double quotes that we see in the first two. We just see hello world by itself. Okay, so that is our first two lines of code that we want to deal with. My string example one equals the string hello world. And then we print Printlin, my string example one. Let's put that into a code file. We'll create my first file.jl and it must be a plain text file ending with a, a dot jl. So um, in lecture one, uh, it, uh, sorry, in lecture zero, the idea was that you should be able to navigate around your computer system to find out where your folders, where your files are, the different folders. So in this computer, I have a, fol a folder called Nervous Beginners, and that is where I want to put the code. And um, I need to create something. So I've set up a Notepad Plus so that I can type it in there. You will have your own editor. You will edit, um, put in things like that. Um, uh, I don't want a macro. So my, uh, my string example one equals hello world. So that's the first line. I've typed it in. There doesn't seem to be any error. Then I want it to function println. I'm opening and closing the brackets. And I'm asking, oh, this thing knows what I want. Your editor might also know what you want there, or it might not. It doesn't matter, you just make sure that the code is there and it is correct. So now I want to save it, and you can maybe use a shortcut or whatever your own method is. I'm going to click on File and on Save As. And what happens in this case, with this particular system, it suggests things to me. So it, it's going to save it in Nervous Beginners. It's important to check that the code is going to be saved in the correct folder. I hope that you will have a folder of your own where you keep your code that you create for this course. Um, and it suggests the name new one, which is I certainly don't want. So I'm going to call it my first file dot. Now, if I just give the name, and many people will just give a name like this, then it will actually be a normal text file, which is not what I want. I want it to be dot jl. I want it to be a Julia code file. It is just plain text, but by giving it the extension dot jl, it's being seen as a Julia code file. And I can save it. And if I want to make sure that uh, it's correct, then I can check it is in fact called myfirstfile.jl and it's in Nervous Beginners. And so I'm making the, uh, everything seems to be correct. So I can go back uh, to here and I can try to run it. I use include. So another built-in function, and again, because it's a built-in function, I have to put open 
and close. And now I have to give the name of the file. But it's not a variable, so I can't just use a variable name like this. I actually have to put it in double quotes to indicate that it is a string. So my first file. And I have to put the .jl. So literally exactly the first thing, and it comes back as the previous one. Now, you might uh, notice there's a very slight difference in the code that we see here. So when we run the, f the, the file in the code, sorry, the code in the file, um, it has both lines. When we run both lines at the Julia prompt, we first run my string example one equals hello world, and we see this echo of hello world. And then we run Printlin and we see hello world. But, uh, but when we run include my first file, although it's got both lines, it doesn't actually show us the first line. It just shows that. And that's a difference between a function file and the REPL. When we run code in the REPL, we do it line by line. And Julia will often echo things below the line, some kind of message about the line we've just executed. When we run the lines inside a code file, normally we will not get any of those echoing messages. So when you run a file from, in, when you run your code from inside a file, you'll see fewer messages on the screen than if you run exactly the same code line by line in the REPL. And that's one of the differences that occurs between Julia code files and the Julia REPL. Okay, so let's go back to our mastered item. Um, there is a, a little bit of message here. You can use the uh, function pwd with open and close bracket to check what your working directory is. And if it's the wrong directory, you can use cd to change it. Okay, anyway, let me congratulate you because you have, if you've done as far as this, you've done your first Julia program. That's it. That's all it takes to, to do coding. You write valid Julia code, you put it in a file, and you run it with include. There are other ways to do it. Of course, there are always multiple ways to do things in computer programming. But that's your first program. It's wonderful. OK. Let's just revise. So we have a string value that we created. We had a function called println, which will echo a string to the screen. We um, have my string example as a variable name. We have the equals that does assignment. We have the function include that runs a Julia code file. What's a Julia code file? It's a plain text file with the extension .jl. And this is what we'll do over and over in this course. There'll be some new ideas. There'll be some examples. And you should try those examples as the lesson proceeds. And then there'll be some code files also to try and, and work on. This particular lesson is followed by a quiz, a small exercise, and a small self-graded assessment uh, assignment before you go on to lecture two of week one. They're very quick and short. They just reinforce what we've spoken about. They're kind of just basically repeating the things that we've done. So, but it really is best that you do that so that you make sure that all the pieces are in place. We do things incredibly simply so that when we start doing things a bit more complicated later on, you've already done those things in a very simple way. All right, that's the end of lesson one.